Once again to our Wednesday Bible study and today we're going to be looking at a very serious topic called depression. Uh, this pandemic has been affecting people in adverse ways that perhaps are going undetected and I want to uh, try to encourage us as we go through these difficult times in the history of man. Uh, depression. The Mayo Clinic staff defines depression as a mood disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. Also called major depressive disorder or clinical depression, it affects how you feel, think, and behave and can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems. You may have trouble doing normal day-to-day -day activities and sometimes you may feel as if life isn't worth living. More than just a bout of the blues, depression isn't a weakness and you can't simply snap out of it. Depression may require long-term treatment but don't get discouraged. Most people feel with depression feel better with medication, psychological counseling, or both. Although depression may occur only one time during your life, usually people have multiple episodes of depression. During these episodes, symptoms occur most of the day, nearly every day, and may include feelings of sadness, tearfulness, emptiness, or hopelessness, angry outbursts, irritability or frustration, even over small matters, anxiety, agitation or restlessness, sleep disturbances, including insomnia or sleeping too much, loss of interest or pleasure in most or all normal activities such as sex, hobbies, or sports, slowed thinking, speaking, or body movements, tiredness, and lack of energy, so even small tasks take extra effort. Changes in appetite, often reduced appetite and weight loss, but increased cravings for food and weight gain in some people. Trouble thinking, concentrating, making decisions, and remembering things. This is what the Mayo Clinic staff says depression is. Feelings of worthlessness or guilt, fixating on past failures or blaming yourself for things that aren't your responsibility. Frequent or recurrent thoughts of death, suicidal thoughts, suicide attempts, or actual suicide. Unexplained physical problems, such as back pain or headaches. And I know some of you are saying, well, I've been experiencing some of those symptoms, uh, so I may be depressed. Well, unfortunately, depression is not always diagnosed, and it's not always as deep as will cause some to uh, con consider or attempt suicide. But Let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible says. Uh, when we look at the stories of David, we're told uh, of a very complex person. We see a man who is courageous, 
skillful, hunted, victorious, envied, loved, hated, and successful. We see a flawed man who makes what some would see as stupid mistakes. And when you follow his life from his anointing to Goliath, to Jonathan and Saul, to being chased, to being crowned king, to Bathsheba and Uriah, to Absalom, and on and on until his death. His deeds are well documented. However, it's in the Psalms that we get a view of what went on inside this man after God's own heart. Let's look at one of them, Psalms 143. Hear my prayer, O Jehovah. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness, answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsted after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. Hear me speedily, O Jehovah, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Jehovah, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Jehovah, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. Folk, depression is real. It's real in the lives of many in our society and it even exists among the saints of God. Depression is crippling. It saps your strength. It steals your desires. And if left untreated, it can lead to an unintended withdrawal from society and even suicide. Depression is stealthy. It sneaks up on you and has you with sad countenance before you even know what hits you. Depression does not discriminate. The young, the old, the rich, the poor, the married, the single, the successful, and those just getting by all get depressed. Men get depressed. Women get depressed. Young folk get depressed. Members get depressed. Preachers get depressed. And in our text, David is depressed. So what can I do about it? Depression is deepened when you feel there is no answer to your problem and you're tempted to rehearse the reasons that you feel in this way. Our daily lives are complicated enough without the current added pressures of a frightening disease and the unintended upheaval of our daily routines. When you're depressed, your mind gets in an inescapable loop of what's wrong and you can't get off. David pleads that God will not judge him because no man could stand up to God's scrutiny. David is depressed. 
In verse 4, he said, Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. He has no drive. He has no energy. He has no get up and go. Someone once said, life will kill you. And if you let it, that's exactly what it will do. The pressures of everyday life, the demands of family, the difficulties at work, and the issues with your health can sometimes make you feel that you are doomed, destroyed, and desolate. But look at David's remedy. In verse number five, he says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse or I consider on the work of thy hands. David said, I meditate on all your works. Not my victories, not my conquests, nor my triumphs or achievements or accolades, your works. When he remembers what God has done, it lets him know that he can stretch forth his hands to God again. He needs God like dry land needs water. Remember what the Lord has done. We've talked a lot about faith and we've talked about how critical a, memory, a good memory is to remember how God has blessed you in the past in order to strengthen your faith in the present. Remember how the Lord has provided. Don't forget how the Lord has delivered before and rely on him to deliver again. When depression comes, change your approach. When it comes, make your appeal to God. When it comes, change directions and don't constantly think of the problem. Don't immerse yourself in the latest statistics and when will this thing, things get back to the old normal and meditate on his works. Don't let it get the upper hand. Don't let it beat you down. Pills are temporary, but the power of God is permanent. No medicine works for everybody, but God never fails. Paul puts it like this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9, he says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroy. Whatever your situation, however you feel, God has not forsaken us. There are many right now wondering, what's next? Guess what? We've always wondered, what's next? But what's next is in God's hand, just like it's always been. It's just that before, there were certain things we could kind of count on. We can somewhat rely on, on this day, these things will happen. On that day, those things will occur. But now everything is so topsy-turvy, we don't have those things to cling to. And so now we're stuck with wondering what's happening next. We've always wondered what's happening. And uncertainty can cause some of us to get depressed. Sitting at home, unable to participate in previously normal activities, on edge because of this virus, forced to change the way we go about our daily lives and being prohibited from social connections can cause all of us to feel depressed. It may not be obvious. It may not even be happening to you, but it is a very real threat that has to be address. If it has not hit you, thank God. If it has, the answers are in God's word. All the answers we need are found in the word of God. Whatever we face, God's people have faced it before. Listen to the preacher confirm it in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. You find the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under 
the son. Look at what the preacher said, verse 10. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It had been already of old time, which was before us. Folk have, folk have faced plagues in the past. And when we read the text in Psalm 143, it appears that David is depressed, so he calls on God. Let's look at it again. Let's break it apart. Verses 1 through 4. Hear my prayer, O Jehovah. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. He appeals to God to answer him and aid him. He pleads for God not to judge him, because no man can stand righteous in his sight because of the attack of his enemies. Listen to what he says. His spirit is overwhelmed. David is depressed, but he wisely makes his appeal to Jehovah. Look at verse five. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul searcheth, thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. All right, he appeals to God because he's awed by God's power. He remembers the days of old. He, he meditates on all the works of God's hands. How's your memory? Can you remember a time when you were down before and God brought you through? Not only does he remember, <clears throat> but he requests to be closer his soul thirsteth after God. One of the most powerful human needs of a human being is thirst. It's a cry for our body, for life-sustaining water. And if that cry goes unanswered, death is the result. Look at verse number seven. Hear me speedily, O Jehovah. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Jehovah, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Jehovah, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. He, listen to what David is asking. These are his requests. Look at verse seven. He says, hear me and hide not from me. Then he says, cause me to hear of thy loving kindness or thy love and cause me to know the way that I should walk. Too many times we want God to fix everybody else. David said, cause me to know the way that I should walk. Deliver me from my enemies. Verse 10, teach me to do thy will. Verse 11, quicken me or bring me back to life. He says his soul, his spirit is feeling like those that have gone down to the grave. And he says, quicken me for your name's sake. Verse number 12, and of thy mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Jehovah, I'm your child. You are my protector. Don't do it for me. Do it for your name's sake. That way the world will know that God takes care of his own. And if you ever feel yourself feeling like David, call on God. 
God takes care of his own. And when we as God's people can stand amidst all the turmoil around us, it's going to be evident to somebody we know, somebody we don't know, that will see us and wonder, how are you holding up so well? Because I got a God that takes care of his children. We look forward to meeting with you again on next Wednesday, where we'll go into another interesting and compelling study of God's word. Until then, we ask that you will be careful and be prayerful. God bless you. Show me the way.